Um, I'm Virgil, I'm 31, originally from France. Um, looking now back at eight years of traveling, I'm located in uh, northern Norway in Tromsø, and I'm a Aurora photographer guide. I started traveling about yeah, eight years ago in May 2011. Um, I actually studied in Lithuania in England and had a little break in France and I did a big break to Australia for about two years. Um, I've done now 42 countries about. I'm not gonna list them because they're long, the list is a bit long. But uh, yeah, I've been to Asia, Africa, part of the, the US as well. Uh, and been focused now in the northern countries in Scandinavia. Um, I lived in total in seven countries. Uh, which are Australia, New Zealand, uh, lived in Greece, in Czech Republic, Finland, Iceland, Norway, uh, which brought me a lot of things. And um, yeah, I got into guiding thanks to a friend that I met in Australia in my second year of traveling, uh, who taught me a lot and, uh, in the jungle in Australia. Fell in love with this place. That got me into uh, learning everything about it. All the snakes, the spiders, all the wildlife, which was absolutely amazing and uh, got me into uh, maybe starting to think about guiding and like help people to discover places and you know, make connection with people. I decided to change a little bit, try to find some outdoor or something like this, you know. So I decided to apply for a job as a guide uh, in Greece, which I got. And I worked there for six months, which was not the best company, but that actually helped me a lot because I trained myself a lot with the group control, with a lot of things. So it was really interesting actually to, to have this experience. And um, yeah, then I decided to go up in the north uh, to Scandinavia above the Arctic Circle. Uh, to try something a bit more challenging, to kind of, to find some really cold weather, to find some cold temperatures, some harder conditions, which I got where I was guiding snowmobiles, and uh, I then saw my first uh, northern lights when I was there, when I was really badly equipped with really bad equipment, with camera equipment, uh, and I got a little bit frustrated about it because I discovered that northern lights was something I really loved, and uh, that in these last eight years of travels. I've always been into photography, uh, into trying to like uh, save these pictures of the world I have. Um, but I never had really yeah, good gears about it, so I decided to go a bit higher uh, and got into photography. And um, I'm now in Tromsø in Northern Norway, and that's where uh, I basically spend most of my time going in the outdoors and photographing with better gears, of course, and improving my skills with about photography and meeting especially meeting amazing people that helped me a lot with, uh, with photography, uh, with yeah, developing my creativity and all this. So yeah, it's been absolutely awesome and thanks to the people that I'm here right now. I realized that uh, scouting at daytime is really helpful to find good composition and uh, the good orientation. Especially when you're dealing with night photography, you know, uh, there might be some elements you don't really see in the darkness uh, or under the rush of the northern lights, for example and then I can match a place according to the intensity of the lights. Uh, for instance, choosing a foreground facing north on quiet nights uh, or choosing composition facing west uh, when I know that the aurora forecast announces stronger activity. You know. Then I usually point it uh, on the map and I come back to it at the right time to uh, be able to maximize my shots.
Um, I've been working with Virgil now. This is my second season out wandering out with him. Um, and I would describe him as one of the best guides that there is. Uh, all of our guests that go on tour with him, regardless of seeing the Northern Lights or not, they come back and they've had like the best night of their lives. But working with him is good. He's very thorough, very knowledgeable, and like the Arctic is in his blood, so. has really good group control and he has a very commanding presence so when you're out on a tour with Virgil he can bring everybody together no matter whereabouts in the world that you're from everybody can connect and discuss like like he's very informative about the science behind the Northern Lights and he understands that some people like me maybe science doesn't come naturally so he can explain it in a way that is relevant for everybody so I think as a guide he's very good but then as a people person he's also kind of like a double good advice, yeah. I've told you a lot of things already about the atmosphere, uh, about where the lights come from, but we still don't know how they are actually made, yeah. So when these winds are bringing uh, these electrically charged particles, they're gonna come and enter into the ionosphere. When they come and they enter, these winds, they come like this, right? They're not gonna enter toward our ge uh, geographic north. They're gonna enter toward our magnetic north which is a little bit tilted on the side. It's probably here. It's always a bit tilted like this, yeah? Uh, so when they enter, they're gonna try to go toward this point, actually. When they go toward this point, they burn really high in the atmosphere, as I said, so they're gonna burn maybe here. So if they burn here, 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 and then it creates this bow around our planet. The green color is the one you see when oxygen is an activity, right? Because oxygen is one of the most spreaded ones. Oxygen is about, I would say, 150 or 200 kilometers up to 350, okay? Sometimes you have red. Red is oxygen as well, but it's way higher. So it's maybe 350 to 500. This is really uh, seen in Antarctica or in Alaska as well. I've rarely seen them here in the Arctic, in northern Norway. When the northern lines are getting crazy, when you start to have really fast shaping, that's when nitrogen is an activity. And usually it's because when this wind are entering, they have more impact so they can go lower onto the, the atmosphere. So the nitrogen happens actually a bit lower in altitude, which is probably between 90 kilometers and 150. And when it's hitting, it hits this purple color or pink color or blue color sometimes. And that's when you get these really fast movements. Um, so originally I started traveling. Why did I start traveling? I think the main reason is because I got scared. Um, I got scared of uh, the commitment that I would, could have at home. So I was studying for two years after my high school degrees and then I did one year uh, at university where all my courses were in English and I did a big loan at the bank and uh, I don't even remember the amount. Um, but uh, after this semester I did at university, I uh, left abroad in Spain for two months for an internship. Uh, and when I got home, I realized how much money I actually asked to the bank. And I have to say that really scared me because I really felt that I was gonna go in there until I'm 40, you know. And like I realized that I didn't want to do this, you know. I didn't want to spend my life um, until I'm 40, 45 to just give money back to the bank and be stuck where I am, you know. I would kind of be free, you know, like, that's what I was looking for. I tried to find what I loved, my passions and all this, and yeah, that's the best thing I've ever done. Yeah. And I have to say that uh, I can't even thank enough my parents for not pushing me, because my father was kicking me out uh, to try to motivate me, and my father was dragging me back <laughs> to try to keep me in the nest. Uh, but uh, both of them were super understanding and uh, yeah, I, I can only say a massive thank you for this. So in Tromsø the weather conditions can be really complicated because we are on the coast and so usually temperatures are way higher, uh, more precipitation so we've got maybe some like zero degrees here and you move inland maybe about I don't know, like 100 kilometers and it drops to like minus 20, minus 30. So it's really important, I think, to be really well equipped.
and to have the good years uh, with you all the time when you go out. Sometimes the weather is a bit, uh, a bit tricky, it's a bit hard to go any further. And tonight is a perfect example of what we're having. We are having a snowstorm here. Uh, we're planning on going to Finland, it's not gonna happen tonight. So we're gonna turn around, probably have a beer or something, I think. And uh, yeah, keep this mission for tomorrow, eh? Hey?